Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liz Bruner filling in for Kathy Fountain today. Now, if you're tired of turkey or you're unhappy with ham or if you just want to add a little something special to this year's holiday table, we've got just the menu for your holiday meal. So get yourself a piece of paper and a pencil because for the next half hour, we're going to tease your taste buds with a Cayman Christmas dinner. And I'm sure you're going to want to write down how you can get the recipes. Please welcome our master chef, entrepreneur and restaurateur, none other than Chef Tell is with us today. Hi, Hi. Nice so glad. Thank you. Thank you. You are going to make a Cayman Christmas dinner for us. What is a Cayman Christmas dinner? Hi, Christmas time in, in Caymans, they used to eat just seafood or lobster or maybe a little beef or so because the island, they just had fish on, you know, there was not much there. But during the last few years, they changed a little bit. So for Christmas, for a lot of Americans come down as tourists or people from Europe. So we just make a beautiful, nice lobster dish. Then I thought a mango soup would be very nice. This uh, is so going to be a chilled soup. Yeah? It's a cold, cold yeah. mango soup, yeah. And then a little lobster as an entree and uh, show you how to make a rum punch to keep the spirits up. <laughs> Literally, so that, to speak, right? yeah. And then we make a little chocolate mousse or something like this. Mm. There's no dessert, son. They make those heavy cakes, those cassava cakes and uh, yam, the sweet potato pies. And those sake sauce, I mean, they're real heavy, heavy cakes. You can use them as, 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 as anchor weights for your boat. So I didn't think I'm going to come to Tampa and show you make one of those cassava pies. They are really good, but they're just extremely heavy. And there's so much molasses in there and sugar that diabetics, they just see, see the recipe and they have to get a shot of insulin. So we decided to just make a little very nice chocolate mousse or something good. like this. It's also very warm down there this time of year, so you don't want to have a lot of heavy <coughs> foods Hi, it's, it's warm all year round. It's just, no, it's, I mean, the, 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 the season changed a little bit. It goes from 90 to 88, and they call this a cold wave. And then sometimes <laughs> it goes, I mean, once it was, once the temperature, I'm there now for, I visited there since 72, I have a house there since 80, and I lived there since 86 when I bought my restaurant. And this is a true story, once the temperature went down to 68 degrees. And that and was the, cold, That right? was cold for yeah. them. There's no there ovens there, no heaters, there's nothing. So the children had to wear sweaters to go to school, because 68 is cold when the wind blows a little bit. And they had used to the kind of temperature, it's a true story. They have, a, uh, they have Catholic school and they have the regular public schools, which are British, the island is British, it's a crown colony. And they have a uniform to wear in school. They have to wear a uniform. And it's, it's a white, uh, a blue, a blue uh, s uh, slacks or, or a skirt and a white blouse. Yeah. The only sweaters which were allowed with a uniform, which states in the, in the rules for the schools, is a white sweater or a gray sweater. So the parents went out shopping that afternoon. There were probably 1,400 kids going in school. There was no 1,400 sweaters on the island in one, one color. The kids bought all kinds of sweaters. They went in school with two t-shirts and a, a, a sweater which was pastel or something. They wouldn't let them in school because it didn't fit the oh uniform. No. This, so the kids picked up right away. They went home again, changed his white sweater to a, uh, a black sweater. So they hadn't, didn't have to go to school. And so it was only for two days they missed school because they didn't have the right color sweater. Mm -hmm. So once in a while it gets cold. Well, let's get started cooking. What all right, are we going to do? Uh, we have a I'm going to start with the chocolate mousse maybe first in the middle of So with the chocolate mousse, what I did, I melted down. Eight ounces of bittersweet chocolate, the baker chocolate you find in your, in your supermarket or whatever. Just like this, melt this down a little bit. Then we're going to separate some eggs. Actually, in this case, I separate two eggs. What I'm going to do, the way most people crack an egg, they crack it on a sharp surface like this, which gives you many small pieces of eggshell. You separate the egg and the piece of eggshell, they're going to fall in your mousse because they're so small you cannot see it. Your children eat the mousse, they cut the lips on the shell, it's a bloody mess, and you say, <laughs> I don't know. The way you crack an egg is on a flat surface like this. This is where you get big pieces of eggshell, and if they would fall in your food, at least you can see it and you can take it out. You see this? Just like this. cooking tips and food as that's, well. That's, that's what it's all about. This goes right in here, this goes right in here, because you don't need egg white. Now we're just going to mix this up for a little bit. Very nice, very simple, no big deal. Now we're going to add in there a little liquor. I add a little gourmet in there. If you don't want to use any gourmet, whatever, you don't have to use it. That's just for flavoring. You can use cognac, you can use peppermint, whatever you want. Can you use an orange flavor or something? Because can that's similar to the Grand Marnier yeah, flavor. Yeah, you can use an orange flavor, whatever you want to do, just like this. Very nice, very simple. No big deal. It's only a few ingredients. Some people whip some egg whites at this and there. I don't do it. I like my chocolate mousse real, real rich. Now, is we that too hot, though, for the eggs to go in there? Will that, will that cook the eggs, or was it because it cooled off enough? If it would be too hot, I wouldn't put it in. Right? Okay, <laughs> okay, that's true. You I know mean, better it's than that, I. It's that simple, yeah. I mean, people ask a lot of questions. That's actually good. There's no dumb questions. There's only dumb answers. <laughs> it's not too hot, okay? Just okay. add it in like this. Mix it up. Very nice. You see this? How beautiful and nice it's going to be. It smells wonderful. Oh, yeah. We should have smell of vision Smell of vision yeah. Said this years ago, you know. You whip that cream up beforehand. Let's just whip the cream up a little because it makes a lot of noise and then we can have a conversation while we do all this cooking here. So just mix this up. Very nice, very simple. Now a lot of people, they say how you can taste food without getting any calories. You know how you can taste food without getting any calories? You know I would that? sure like to know that, wouldn't we? Put one thing in here. 
<laughs> no calories whatsoever, okay? Just mix this up. Very nice, very simple, very light. That's no fun that way. Huh? That's it's no, no fun, fun that you way. You gotta yeah, taste it all. Okay, now you wanna taste it, please? Tell oh, me I'm gonna get it. to taste this? Do I stick my finger in? I guess not. I'll you, use this spoon. You can use whatever you want. It's your show. I'm just against you. Mm. Yeah. I'm in and out of here. I'm telling you. Oh, it's good. Is it nice? Mm-hmm. Need some more gum in But here? I'm a chocoholic, so. You're a chocoholic? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Best chocolate mousse I made all day. <laughs> it's the only one he's made all day. Okay, we just thought it's right in here. You put those in sort of wine glasses. It looks real pretty like uh, that. This looks very nice, you know. Yeah. And this way everybody gets the same portion. Mm. I should have used three glasses. I only have two, so it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> this goes right underneath here, just like this. Now we're oh. going to clean the glass. That's, <laughs> That's how the best way. <laughs> That's how they do it in a restaurant. You just don't see it. <laughs> just kidding. He's going to tell us all just these kidding. Okay, secrets. just kidding. Sorry. Now we're going to have this right over here. Just let it sit for a few minutes. This we're going to put in the refrigerator overnight. Mm -hmm. Let it chill away, beautiful. So you should make this the day before then? The day before okay. in the morning. Also, you don't want to go in Christmas and hustle all day. You know, you right. get up 5 o'clock in the morning, start cooking the turkey, this and this, or the lobster, whatever it's required. And by the time it's 4 o'clock, you sit down, you're totally exhausted. Some of this stuff you should make ahead. Make it yourself easy. Make the stuffing ahead, make this ahead, throw it in the microwave. Man, they don't know. <laughs> you have to make, you know, just, why? So just let it sit like this. I said, let it here. And now we're going to make a little raspberry sauce with it in case you mm -hmm. want some raspberry sauce. The raspberry sauce you cannot put on top till this actually chills, okay? I would have bought some chilled ones, but for whatever reason, it's a long story. Long story. We're going to make the raspberry sauce. These are beautiful, fresh raspberries. No, actually, they're frozen. Are they, they were frozen? frozen and then thawed, so yeah. you, you recommend using the frozen kind? I use the fresh ones, but the fresh ones, they charge you $3.59 for a pint, you know? And then you chop them up, use the frozen one, defrost them, who knows the difference? You know, I mean, it tastes the same, you think? It tastes the same. Okay. And I use fresh ones if I have to make a garnish or something very special, you know, if the governor comes in the restaurant or something like this. <laughs> this goes right over here. Tiny touch of sugar, not too much. How much is a tiny touch? What, a couple teaspoon, teaspoon or Teaspoon, okay. Whatever. You know, for those of us who like to use spoons. Beautiful. 106 proof. <laughs> Mix this a beautiful dessert for children's birthday party. <laughs> and make them all go to sleep, You right? give them this at 12, they fall asleep at 12.30, man. You wake them up at 5, they say, what a party, and they didn't ruin your house. You know what I mean? This goes right in here, just mix this up real fast, no big deal. What can I tell you? Let's wait, the chocolate mousse is real nice and thick. You pull this over, bang, bang, bang. What can I tell and we've you? we've got one, very one nice, of them out very of the way, simple, and we like need this. to take a break. We'll be right back with more cooking with Chef Tell. No problem. Okay. Cooking Cayman style today with Chef Tell, and we're about to start the next one. We just finished the chocolate saute or the, the chocolate mousse, mousse the yes. Chocolate mousse. And now, now what are you going to make? The lobster. We use a little butter in here, clarified butter, or you mm. can use margarine, olive oil. Doesn't make any difference. How did you break that shell? You just cut it like this. You just cut it down like this. Okay. Then it's just done. Just going to take the lobster out. And it's not the first time I'm you doing You make it this. look so easy. It is easy, man. It is easy. You do it for 35 years like I do. It's easy. Oh, I suppose then so. Then just going to take the lobster, cut this little dark piece off because you really don't need it, you know. No. And just cut it in thin pieces, little chunks like this. Now, I'm going to ask you, is this frozen or is this fresh? It's, uh, what, do you mean to lie to you? It's frozen. It was frozen. We couldn't find any nice decent uh -huh. fresh lobsters yesterday. But you, you say you can use either, yeah. Yeah, fresh is nice, but what do I do, right? Take a little lime. Anytime you use a lime or lemon, you squeeze a little bit, then mm -hmm. you roll it. Makes it much juicier. Same works for your spouse. A little squeeze here and there. <laughs> Put just a little stuff in there. Just a little bit, blah, 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 just like this. We've got a question for you, Chef. Yes, Tell This is from Gary in Tampa. Go ahead, Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, Chef. Yeah. Look here. Do you have any plans or uh, to come back to Tampa or to open one of your restaurants here? Not a restaurant. Yeah. I just, that's a very good question, Gary. Yes. I like all your five dollars. <laughs> I just came to Tampa six weeks ago. I opened up a catering business. So if you want to do, don't cook that stuff at home, I'm going to come to your place and I cook it at home for you. It's I called uh, Bayside Catering, Bayside. I believe. Chef and we'll, have a, Bayside Catering. we'll have a phone number for you a so little bit So what I'm doing later. here, I dredge those lobster pieces in the flour, mm -hmm. just like this. Very nice, very simple, no big deal. That's just plain flour, no salt, pepper, anything plain like that? Plain flour, no salt, no pepper. I put a little salt, a little pepper on the fish, on the lobster, I should say. When I put the lime juice on, let's put this underneath down there too. Now we're just going to take those lobster pieces, take them out. And just right in the sauté bin like this. Just cook them for a little bit. How high bit. a flame do you have? I there? have it on real high, but the pan is not real hot yet, but it's only about to take probably a minute or so. And now we're just going to sauté this lobster for a little bit, okay? Why we sauté this lobster? This goes underneath there too. It looks like a big mess underneath there. <laughs> we you won't tell anybody. It. That's all right, no problem. Just always clean as you go. This one never gets real dirty. Now we're going to have here some mushrooms, some uh, shallots, some tomato concasse, salt, pepper, a little scallion, and chopped parsley. We're just going to take our mushroom, they're already sliced. 
I told the boys how to slice them. Of course, you know, they're sliced and they're sliced. Just shut them down like this. Very nice, very simple. And this is for our lobster dish. We're going to add all these ingredients in there as soon as the lobster is sauteed. The pan was very nice. It doesn't stick to the soupe just like this. You see how beautiful mm -hmm. nice it is? It doesn't stick. It's great. Now we're going to have this and we're going to start in our mango soup. Ooh. The cold mango soup, going to have a blender here. I tried to get some fresh mango, but needless to say, I couldn't find any fresh mango. I used some canned mango, which I normally don't use, but I tried the recipe last night, you get away with it, okay? So if you want to have no fresh mangoes, the fresh mangoes make a much nicer flavor. You also can use papaya. Just going to add this right in here. Of course, right mangoes over here. and papayas are very common down in yeah. the Cayman Islands, aren't we have, they? We have seasoned there. Touch of sugar. Little yogurt, you don't want to add any cream in there, you know? Very nice, very simple. How much simple. are you putting in a whole container? Yeah, the whole container okay. of yogurt, just like this in there. This How many goes calories right are in this? Is this, not, is this a it's not like high in calories. Well, you're using yogurt, that's true. Use yogurt, if you use sour cream or heavy cream, you know, you really would go right up there. Little lemon juice. Always, anytime you use sugar, you want to use some acid, which makes it really nice and equalize a little bit. Is it no. true that you're, when you're squeezing limes and lemons, that if they're um, room temperature and after you roll them, they're better than actually Oh, yeah, of chilled? course, much better, yeah. Some people don't in the microwave, too, you know, just for 30 just seconds or so, and then they warm up a little bit, gives more juice. Just mix this up. And don't puree it too much. Don't make it look like baby food, okay? You want to have a little <laughs> texture in there, okay? Just like this. You want to get real fancy. Now, that's optional again. If you don't like the alcohol, don't add any of It's just a little champagne, not too much, just a little bit. Then you're going to mix this up one more time with the champagne. Makes it very nice and effervescent. Now our lobster is cooking here very nice oh, and beautiful. It's beginning to you smell see this? too. It smells now wonderful. Now I'm going to do it just like this. And oh. the, first time, <laughs> the first time you do this at home, you over your sink. <laughs> it's much easier to clean up the sink than clean up this, okay? <laughs> now we're just going to take our little soup. And mix this up here one more time. So we don't get all the thin stuff in, huh? Doesn't the lobster start smelling good? Oh, that's the bottle, you know. Mm. So just see those little pieces there? Very yes. nice, oh, very looks simple. very good. This goes right over here. And then we're going to put the soup up here. Want to use a little tiny slice of lime. Put this just on top. A little garnish there. Just looks a little garnish. Very pretty. Put it right on top. Right over here. And Beautiful, we need to take another nice break. Mango soup. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll keep cooking with Chef Tell. Stay with us. Can I try the soup? Chef Tell is our special guest today, and we have a phone call from Jackie in Tampa. Go ahead, Jackie. Uh, I was wondering how long has Chef Tell been cooking, and what is his educational background? Okay, I started my apprenticeship at the age of 13 and a half in uh, Stuttgart, Germany. After that, I made my apprenticeship for three years. Then I worked in restaurants in France, Switzerland, Sweden, Austria, and went back to Germany. Got my master's degree in the University of Heidelberg at the age of 27. I was the youngest chef ever got a master's degree in Europe. I was named Chef of the Year the next year, and then I was named the team leader of the German national cooking team. While I was the team leader, for the first time ever, Germany won the gold medal in the cooking Olympics under my leadership. Then I went to America in 1972. I worked in all kinds of Italian restaurants there, and I finally moved down to the Cayman Islands where I live at the present time. So, one, now let's, okay. We got one more question here, okay. Chef. Okay. In, yes, in preparing gourmet food, uh, do you have a favorite? Uh, I don't have a favorite. I like all foods. Uh, depends what time of the year, what kind of food I like, what the season is. What I like the most probably is desserts. Anything with chocolate and raspberry, man, I go crazy. You, know? you I and can me live, both. I could live on chocolate. You know, me so. too. Anyhow, the lobster, the lobster just was yeah. sauteed. Now we have the lobster sauteed. We're going to add our mushrooms in the sauté pan just like this. What are out in there is a little chopped shallots, okay? We add our shallots in there. Then we're going to add some garlic in there, which is peeled and chopped. And don't use the garlic, you know, the garlic powder, use the fresh stuff. Some tomato concasse. Tomato concasse is peeled, seeded, and diced tomato. Then we add in there some scallions, just like this, a tiny dash of... That's how the German chefs add salt and food. You know how the French guys do it? French guys cannot cook it, but anytime the French guys, they make a big show. That's how the French guys do it. Take a little salt, they go, ça va, ça va, ça va. <laughs> and every time they say ça va, they charge you four more dollars. Now we add in there a little pepper. And now we're just going to sauté all these ingredients, you see? You're using now, white pepper, yes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can use black one too, but in a white sauce like this, you know. Just sauté it a little bit, you know, like I said, the first time doing this at home. It makes it look over. so easy. It is easy. To flip the pan. 35 years, baby. I took it for a long time. <laughs> you should see me the first few times. When I was trained to do this, we had to use an empty pan like this. That's how the chefs trained us. They, said they gave us a pan like this. They said put a little salt in there. 
then you had to try with the salt. You had ah. it just and after you had the motion, try it. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm going to be put so, on the spot. So I, well, you should play it heavy. Huh? How am Could I doing? Be. What do you excellent, think? Excellent, excellent. I come over tonight to show a little more. <laughs> okay. Not with the pan and the salt. You know, <laughs> Just keep going like this. This is cooking. We add a tiny touch of white wine in there, not too much, just a little bit. If you don't want to use white wine, use a little chicken stock, whatever. But since the wine's going to cook a little bit, the alcohol is going to evaporate. I'm not going to make this up. I'm not going to eat a little lobster and you'll be slashed. And I'm going to drive home and say to the officer, you know, I'm sorry. I just had some lobster which you've out. So just going to go like this. Cook this for a little bit. And... Uh, yeah, this just cooks a little bit. Any other questions? One more question, or should we go to the next this one? Is, let's go on to the next one, because okay, we've got a few more Okay, the next one is going to make the rum here. punch. Now, this is, this is mm. what gets you in the Christmas spirit. Orange juice. How much approximately are you putting in there? Equal amounts. Equal one cup. Equal amounts, okay. Three quarters of a cup. Pine, uh, grab for juice. Pineapple juice. So far, so good. Little grenadine. Just like this, in beautiful, nice color. And now it comes. <laughs> Coconut rum. Ooh, man, all the ooze and ahs in ooh, here. Ah, you got that <laughs> Now, if you don't want to, if you don't drink, don't make this rum punch, okay? You can just make fruit punch. <laughs> now we add some white rum in there, coconut rum, white rum, and that's what gets the boys down there. A man, this is K man, you know what I mean? Little dark rum, just like now. <laughs> A hey, little just bit you more, and right? me, what's it? You have to walk this afternoon. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Me too. We add some ice cubes in there. Mm, it's such a pretty color. It looks really nice. Yeah, the, the grenadine. The grenadine does it. Yeah. Color is very important, you know. Gonna put this on here, it's gonna get a little noisy. Ooh, look at that, baby, baby, here I come. Okay, we so. need to take another break and we're gonna pour some of this out. We'll see if one of our audience members wants to taste it when we come yeah, back. Yeah, they don't drive home. <laughs> Albert in Tampa, go ahead, Albert, you're on the line. Albert, Hello. There you are, go ahead, what's your question for Chef Tell? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? Hello. Yes, what's your question, Albert? Yeah. Oh, Chef, uh, I tell there, I, uh, I eat at this restaurant a lot. The best food in the island. Man, Ooh. I could agree with you very much, Albert. That's what I like, you know? We promised you that Ruth okay. was going to try the, the rum punch here. She's been to the Cayman Islands, so go ahead, Ruth, and hey, you Ruth. give us your, your honest opinion here of what you think. She never gets I think she it. likes it. <laughs> Delicious, like delicious, nice, huh? yeah. yeah that's that's great. Spirit, you know? Thank you very much. We're not going to let you take this one right now. We'll have you a little bit later. Thank you so much, Ruth. Okay, okay how's our lobster doing? Excellent. We're, we're having those two lobster pieces here. You know, just put a little rice. I'd mean, rice. Mm -hmm. You know, little chopped parsley in there. Not too much. Just a little bit. Tiny. Do you add the parsley at the end? Always a little parsley. Tiny touch more butter just to make a little sauce out of it. The butter and the wine combines to a little sauce. Then you're just going to put this on top. Ooh, it just looks wonderful. Oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful, I'm telling you. Like the guy just said, Albert knows the best restaurants on the island. I think but hold there's right. more. That's what you always do in a restaurant. You always add another parsley, another 250, you know. Well, you looking, a look has a, has a lot to do yeah, with how the you eye appeal, it. The eye appeal is very, very important, you know. A little lemon match, a lime match, what I want to do just like this, you know. Very nice, very simple. Oh, it looks beautiful. No big deal. Isn't that terrific? That looks wonderful. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Okay. Are there a certain spices and seasonings that you use primarily in the Cayman Islands that are traditional uh, to that area? Uh, we use a region? lot of thyme there. We use the Scotch bonnet peppers, which I didn't bring up because they're extremely sad. And then a lot of lime juice and lemon juice and some citric stuff. Um, because this is, and there's not much cream involved in cooking, like for the soup, we use a little yogurt. I just use the yogurt to stretch the soup, otherwise it's real thick with the mango. But it's a light cuisine. There's only, there's a little butter once in a while, a lot of olive oil, a lot of salt, so some fresh thing. Everything is fresh there. There's no mm -hmm. cream, there's no milk, there's no butter down there. So just use a little bit. Let's talk about your catering coming for just a quick second here. It's called Bayside Catering? Chef tells Bayside Caterers, and we cater from 2 to 2,000. Whatever you want to do, you give us a call, we come over, give you a quote. Weddings, bar mitzvahs, man, you name it, we have it. Dishes like we cook here. Yeah, we don't just cook the dead chicken, you know, with the roast potatoes. <laughs> we make some dishes. I'm not kidding. We make him some chicken. Right. We have just booked a party for 400 people, lobster, stuff like that. We had the phone number on the screen. Let me read it Good. to you once again so you can write this down. It's 886-3886. And also, if you're interested in the recipes that Chef Tell cooked today, which were the sautéed lobster. The grand old house, the chocolate mousse, the rum punch, and of course our mango our soup. Our chilled mango soup. Here's where you can write. You can write to Channel 13 in care of P.O. Box 31113. Chef Tell's Cayman Christmas, Tampa, Florida. 33631-3113 and we ask you to please send a self-addressed stomped envelope. Is this your favorite holiday meal? Is this what uh, you're going to probably have a Christmas day? I'm not. I'm going to have roast goose. Roast goose? And sit on the beach at 90 degree weather and I'm sweating and I don't go into spirits but the Christmas for me is roast goose. I was born and raised in Germany and 
Christmas Day, I have to eat roast goose, baked apple, you know, a little dumpling, and I'm sweating, and I'm like I said, I have my bathing suit on, and I have the coconut tree in my property there. Some coconuts have some lights in there, and I hope I get the spirits, but most of the time I do. Will little, your restaurant see, be open Christmas Day? Oh, yes, ma'am, definitely. Open seven days a week, seven nights a week, and five days mm. a week, and six one punches get you into spirits. All right, well, cheers. it's time. Cheers. Thank you so much for joining Anytime, us, Chantel. Anytime, if, like, if you want me to Christmas, I, I come over and make I'm some I'm going to try this right now. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today. Mm. Put a tiny little piece, and you got it up. Yeah. Okay, you got it. From your 24 hour news source, this is Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Good afternoon, I'm Alan Went, former.